Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to clear and restore your current shell's history, as well as temporarily clear and restore your shell's history on file. This could be handy for a couple of different use cases. For example, maybe you're about to record a video and you want to make absolutely certain that your shell's history is not going to be shown on video because editing that stuff afterwards is kind of annoying there. You got to make sure every frame is blurred, etc. Or you might be giving a presentation to a client or demoing something for work, or maybe you're doing a live stream or broadcasting an event for something. And you just want to make sure that your history is never shown just to be safe, right? You don't want to leak any client work or anything like that. So in this video, we're going to go over both use cases, right? clearing it in the current shell, as well as uh, an ability to do it for all shells. Like, you know, if you open up a couple of different TMUX windows, then uh, it's going to be cleared there as well. So normally my font size is a lot bigger and it will be bumping that up once we start looking at code. We are going to be going over a couple of different scripts that I normally run before I even start recording, which handle things like clearing out my history and then restoring it back, doing a couple other stuff. But uh, yeah, we're also going to go over an alias that I call because you'll notice that there's an, uh, an interesting use case around this one. But yeah, without uh, more delays here, let me first do a control R. This is my normal shell history. I'm going to actually have to blur this one because there are a couple of commands in there that I kind of just don't want to show on video. But rest assured, this is my normal shell history. You know, there's uh, thousands of lines in there. Normally what I do is I end up running uh, one script called start recording, which is an alias actually, start rec is an alias. And this does a couple of different things. It bumps up my font size, it deletes some temporary files from Vim, and it handles clearing out my shell's history in the current shell. So now if I do control R, my shell's history is completely empty. But also if I open up a new terminal session, like just uh, opening up a window here in Tmux, we can see that it's actually cleared here as well. That's because uh, that script, it actually, well, we're gonna get into it in a bit, but you know, it deletes my old history file and basically, well, it doesn't delete it, it copies it to a backup file and then it removes the, the original. But yeah, so that's how you handle the persisted one, uh, you know, so you can open up, up and up different shells, but it is a little bit interesting to get the current shell modified here. But let me go and hit stop recording now, just to show you that, you know, when I revert this, things go back to normal, you know, font size is now a little bit harder to read. But if I do control R here, my history is back to normal here. It's like I never left, uh, you know, my history file while recording is basically uh, lost, which is exactly kind of what I want. But uh, yeah, there we go, cool. So let's go over both of these use cases here. And by the way, all these scripts and aliases and everything, it is available on GitHub here in my dot files. If you go to this local bin directory, then uh, there's a start and stop recording scripts. And there's an aliases file here as well. We're going to go over that in a bit. But um, yeah, let me first actually just zoom in normally here. And uh, again, you know, if I did control R, you would be able to see everything because I'm not running any scripts here. But yeah, let's go. And by the way, I should also mention that uh, this method is for the current shell clearing is specifically for Z shell. If you are using bash, you're gonna have to replace one command with something else. I actually don't know what that something else is offhand. Feel free to let us know in the comments below if you're using bash. But uh, you know, the first thing we need to deal with here is setting the history size to be something other than uh, what you normally have. So like, for example, mine's normally 50,000 here, but if I set this to zero, then I can do my uh, shell history here and it is going to be completely empty because I just zeroed it out. And if I wanna bring this back to what it's been previously, well, there's another environment variable here called, uh, what is it called, save history or save hist. Uh, I normally have this set to 50,000. Again, I'll, I'll show you the config file in a second here. And when I do that, that is gonna set the history back to its original value, which is 50,000, but that is not going to restore my shell's history. Uh, on Z shell, this is the Z shell specific part. You need to run the FC command with a dash capital R flag. That is going to uh, basically load in your history from a file here. And once I run that, then I do control R and we can see uh, the history is back and we're good to go here. And this is the one that's not going to work in bash. I know bash has, uh, you know, there's the history command with dash lowercase r, I think it is, to read a file. But, you know, that just didn't work in Z Shell, at least not in the way that uh, it worked in the same way here. Uh, but before we get into more details like that, let me just very quickly go over my Z Shell RC file here. And by the way, these are all standard shell environment variables related to your history file. You know, I configured where that history file is on disk. It's in my uh, home config directory or cache directory, sorry. Uh, and then Z Shell and history here. And if I actually go to my Z profile file, we can see that uh, we do have, you know, this specification here for base directories here. That uh, cache directory is in my home directory for cache. And then, you know, if I open up a new window here and we go to that um, cache C shell over here. And again, like you saw, I like some autocomplete there. That was uh, something for a project. I'm gonna have to blur that one out, unfortunately. But uh, that's because my shell history hasn't been cleared when I made this video. But uh, yeah, in here, this is where my history is. And you can see the backup file is here as well. Uh, cool. 
that is where things are all set up here. And these are all available if you're using Bash or Z Shell. You know, there's nothing custom here. But this is where I have these two environment variables set to what I want them to be, you know, 50,000 in this case. So yeah, we went over how to clear it out and then restore it back. And that's the current shell. But if I were to open up a new terminal window, then yeah, it is not going to be zeroed out. So it's zeroed out here. Like if I run uh, the history zero again, and then uh, we just do that. But if I were to open up a new terminal window here, let me just open up a brand new one. Yeah, it's not going to be uh, cleared out. We can see it's all there. So now we need to go into, well, how do we do it? A persisted uh, history file, we basically need to delete that, right? So let's go and check out that start recording script. And this script does quite a few things. You know, that's all the output that we saw before, but we're only gonna focus on these two lines over here. So it copies your normal history file to a backup file. And then it just removes your original history file, basically, you know, nulling it out. Your history file is now going to be empty, but you do have a backup over here. And uh, you could have technically used move instead of copy, but I ran into this scenario a while back where somehow, uh, I don't know the exact incantation or incantations of commands that I ran, but I ended up using move initially and I ended up blowing out my history file and the backup. And that was not good. I lost all of my history. Now, I did have a backup of, a, of it in a different uh, drive, so it wasn't a total loss there. You know, I lost basically a day's worth of my history. But then it was like a never again scenario. So I will use copy now. And uh, yeah, so, you know, this just copies the file and then removes it there. And you might be wondering, like, you know, why aren't you also setting the history file to zero in here? And that's a great question. We're going to get to that in a second here. But let's first look at the stop recording script real fast just to show you how that gets reverted. You know, now we just basically copy the other way around, right? The backup file becomes your real history when you're done recording or, you know, whatever you're doing. And uh, things are back in business here. And I actually keep this backup file here lingering around just because, uh, I don't want there to be even like a 1% chance that I somehow lose my backup. So yes, now in my cache Z shell directory, there is a dot back file of my history there. That's normally not really super up to date because you know, it's only when I'm running these scripts that it gets uh, backed up there. But uh, my real history file does get backed up in different ways. But yeah, it's basically an insurance policy. I don't feel comfortable dropping in like an RM on this back file here, just, just, just to be safe. Um, but yeah, now you might be thinking like, well, again, you know, going back to here, why don't you just set the history file like this, right? Like uh, hist size equals zero. And that's a great question. Like I can do that here and then I can run that FCR command in the stop one as well as setting it back to what it was before. But that will not work. So a couple of months ago or whenever it was, I made this one video around how I converted a whole bunch of different aliases to individual shell scripts. So if you go to this bin directory, you know, a couple of months ago, whenever it was, two or three months ago, these all didn't exist here. These were all aliases in my single aliases file or alias file. And then I could have done something like setting the his size to be zero and then on the other side, like just revert it back because when you run an alias that is executing in your current shell, but this is a dedicated shell script that is not going to modify your current shell. So that is why you can't put that in here. Now, there are ways you can sort of maybe work around that. For example, instead of running the script like normal, uh, you can just source it in. So if you do like start recording, uh, if your shell is compatible with the way the script is run, then you will be able to source this into your current shell. And then those environment variables that you're setting will apply and things will work. But I just noticed that it wasn't flaky, but eh, yeah, there was like, there's a lot of work that would, would have maybe have needed to be done to make it compatible with both C shell and bash. So I took what I would say is maybe the easy road out for like once in my life. And uh, let me know in the comments below, maybe, you know, there is probably a better way to do this one. So what I ended up doing here was I actually just created aliases like start rec and stop rec. And all they do is run that start recording script or stop recording script. And it goes over the things that we went over just before to adjust your current shell. So the history size gets cleared out when starting and then stopping, it gets reverted back to this. And then we do the FCR. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're using Z shell, this is all going to work. If you're using bash, you'd need to change that. But uh, overall, the strategy does work. And uh, I figured it's good enough for now because it lets me do what I want to do, like just, uh, you know, cancel out and bring back my history on demand. But yeah, I don't know. There is that like part of my brain where it's like, man, you can make this a lot better just by like sourcing this in and putting everything in one spot, not have to worry about the alias, maybe make it work for both Bash and Z shell. And uh, look, if you want to do that, that's awesome. I will fully support, uh, pull, you know, merging in that pull request if you want to open it up here in the dot file. So I'll leave a link in the description for that one. The whole community will love you for that. So feel free to check that out if you want to do that. But yeah, that's basically it for this setup. And by the way, there is uh, one piece of information here that's a, was a little bit tricky to track down. So this FC-R flag, you can run, uh, what is it, Z shell 
built-ins, I think it was, built-ins. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it is somewhere in here, so we're getting close. So it's hard to find because the font size is so big, but I'm basically just looking for the FC command here, and there's the FC commands, uh, FC command over here, right? Uh, we can see all different types of flags that you can pass into it, and if we look hard enough here, we're probably gonna find the dash R flag, there it is right here. So it reads the history from the given file. Unfortunately, yeah, just using history dash R didn't wanna work with Z shell, at least not the version that I have, but um, you know that's how I learned about this one here. Basically, I was just Googling around for the FC command with like keywords related to Z shell. I found like, uh, you know, it's in that Z shell, or ZSH built-ins man pages here so I get more details. So yeah, that's about it for this one. Let me know in the comments below if, uh, I don't know, you're gonna be using something like this or maybe, hey, there's an improvement to that one. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.